Welcome to episode 214 of the Assorted Calibers podcast, the Second Amendment podcast. There's a little bit for everyone. I'm Weird Beard, and with me tonight is my very lovely hostess, Erin Paulette. How are you doing? Hey, Weird. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, how smart would you say I am? And no, I'm not fishing for compliments. Hmm. Well, I mean, 10 would have to be super genius. Yeah. And... At the overall scale, I mean, you know what? I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go with the. If you've got an IQ of 200, uh, you're, you've got an IQ of 200, you're, you're a 10, and if you've got an sure. IQ of one, you're, you're, you're one. And so I'll put you. I'm gonna give you a 6.5. How's that sound? That actually sounds about right. Because I wasn't sure if I was a six or an eight, and I decided I'd, I'd just, you know, do the average and be a seven. Mm-hmm. I, I was almost, I was, I was, I'm um, almost there, and I, and yeah. I decided not to, not to overshoot shoot because you're, you're smart enough to get angry at me for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't have any real big point in asking, and I may have touched on this before, but right now I'm feeling that I'm not smart enough to make a living with my brain. So, you know, I'm not like super rich or super um, successful in my job or, or whatever. But at the same time, if I was dumber, I think I'd be a lot happier because I wouldn't be worried about a lot of things and I wouldn't be constantly analyzing and in the whole ignorance is bliss. I think I'm just smart enough to be miserable. <laughs> And that's how I'm feeling tonight, folks. Strap in. I'm cheerful tonight. Let me let, let, let me let me pour a bucket of cold water on you, my dear Aaron. But uh, I'll have you know that just before you ca- you you came on to uh, to chat to uh, to start this lovely show, I was arguing with some goddamn idiots on the internet. And let me tell you, as someone who argues with goddamn idiots on the internet a lot. Um, number one, yes, I know. And, and number two, but I, I do it for sport. It's fun for me. I, I know it's not, I'm not, I'm not going to win. I don't care. It's fun. But as long uh, as you're getting something out of it, that's, it's that, fine. that's the, that's the whole point. But, uh, but I will tell you right now that, uh, that idiots are by far some of the most miserable and cantankerous people on earth. I, it is my personal observation that people that are firmly on the dumb scale really start pegging that Dunning Kruger meter, where, of course, for those that don't know, that everyone should know the Dunning Kruger, that the smarter you are, the more aware of the universe you are. And therefore, the, 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 the more you're aware that you're just an infinitesimal speck on a planet scurrying through the universe full of complete unknown stuff and so yeah and so you quickly are to realize yeah no i i i i I got i got myself a science degree and only and i felt dumber when i did it because suddenly i realized how much i didn't know and uh the people that don't do that they feel like yeah, I got a pretty good handle on this universe thing and then people start doing things that they to the, start asking them to do things that they're not capable of doing and and getting mad at them when they don't do it and people start saying oh you didn't know that and they just assume that yeah nobody knows that and they just get a nasty chip on their shoulder because they just assume that everybody else is luckier than them that they just happen to figure out all the right things at the right time so ignorance is bliss it doesn't work unless you're dealing with people who have Down syndrome, who are some of the nicest, sweetest, most p- willing to please people on the planet. And and that's just <laughs> that's just how how they roll. I, I, I have I've only met one person with Down syndrome who I who kind of got on my nerves and I, I I didn't meet their parents, but I suspect that I wouldn't like them either. Um but other than that, oh my God, they're always so nice and so willing to please and so eager and curious. And man, that's not common anymore. <laughs> <sighs> 
Everybody, be more like Corky. <laughs> Corky had it right. <laughs> what show was that from? Where it was where where Corky? I I don't know. Well, the Googles tells me it's a show called Life Goes On. Yes, I didn't really watch much of it, but I was I was I was just aware of it. So <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, the, the life, life's a bat and you've been the ball, Aaron? Yeah, for the past two weeks, life has pretty much been uh, pooping on me from a great height, and I'm tired of it. <laughs> and uh, last week, I just... The, the Facebook drama got toxic, and I needed to walk away. I'm... Well, I, I don't think i'm done permanently i think i will eventually come back although most likely at a reduced level of participation but it was just yeah it got to be too much and i needed to get away from it and what i thought was really interesting was over the next few days how often i would open up the facebook tab and because i deactivated my account you know, it wouldn't take me there. It would, you know, tell me to log in again to reactivate it. And it was like, holy crap, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> and so that it's kind of telling uh, just how ingrained and perhaps addictive it was. And um, I don't remember how many days it's been at this point, but I'm doing it less and less now, which is good. And so hopefully... Uh, you know, I won't let it prey upon me so much and uh, double hopefully it won't consume as much of my time and maybe I can be a little more productive and do other things instead of spending it on the gigantic uh, time sink that is Facebook. Yeah, I find Facebook very much actually holds a very similar li- uh, place in my life as TV did is that I I was unaware of how much TV I watched as a as a kid and into young adulthood until I went to college and I had a extremely tiny dorm room. Uh, my parents said that they wanted ADD me to have a single dorm room so that I wouldn't be distracted by a roommate, which was probably a smart move, but the single dorm rooms are minuscule, at least in the, my first one was, I later got a second one, uh, in my uh, junior and senior year, which was gigantic compared to that one. But literally I looked around that room and I said, I've got room for a, a computer a computer. I, I have a computer, a TV and a stereo. I get to pick two. And I, and I chose the computer and the stereo. And I believe I chose wisely. And, uh, and yeah, so the, and of course this was, this was before them YouTube days. Which now now YouTube is my TV. I literally turn my TV on and watch YouTube. Uh, but yeah, the I, I just suddenly realized that oh man, yeah no, I used to just like turn on TV and just watch and just be like, eh, this isn't what I want to watch, but eh, at least it's on. And uh, same thing went with Facebook. And then at one point, the 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 joyless the the, the moon. F- was the moon face assassins of joy at Facebook decided that I was, I, I, I was having the wrong kind of fun and gave me a 30 day ban. And, uh, I, I just logged off because I'm not going to go and just read Facebook since I can't interact with it. And that's the whole point why I'm on it is to talk with people. And so if I can't talk on it, then I'm not going to read it. And by the time that month was over, yeah, no, I'd, 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 I'd kick the habit. I wasn't, I was I wasn't, I wasn't get the Jones anymore. And so I really have it come back. I log, I log on, you know, maybe once every other week just to see if someone's DM'd me, but that's it. I don't even like, I might read the first post in my feed and then just move on. So either way, it's, there's a lot of drama on there that you're probably better off without. And so I am, I, I, I'm here. We'll take this one day at a time, Aaron, and I'll be your sponsor. <laughs> he says as he takes a drink of his daiquiri. So yeah, shall we? Sh- shall we get on to the news? Eh, I guess you guess. We we got a bunch of it. Hey, you know, it's just eh, I am retired. Yeah, well, I understand. So I will. Uh, you know what, Aaron? You just lay back and be pretty and think of England. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you'll launch the missiles. <laughs> the fire the missiles. Uh, so. Uh, first, what I've got here is that there's a, a bunch of Evalde fam, uh, families uh, that are suing like a whole bunch of people. 
and uh, I kind of wish that this article was a little bit more clear of exactly because it's it's it seems like they're suing the it's a class action lawsuit, and it sounds like they're suing the police. I uh, I heard that they were suing. I think they I think they were trying to sue Daniel Defense. It says uh-huh. they're, in, they're they're involved with every town. Um, I'm trying to remember if they've got anybody else. So, in addition to suing Daniel Defense Manufacturer, they're also suing the store where the gunman bought it, a place called Oasis Outback. Not even going after like a big box store. Like how how much money they can even going to be able to get out of that place? Uh, any port in the storm, I guess. Well, we shall see. But it's. It's interesting because on one hand, like I'm, I'm pretty angry about the police and I am very, very upset that there aren't, you know, heads rolling all over like South Texas, uh, because, you know, because of this, cause it's one of those, like how this, I mean, at least, at least when Parkland was going on, it's like, is anybody not hearing how much the police in action did to, you know, happen cause this to happen and now it seems like yeah people are aware but okay we're aware that the police just kind of sat there did nothing and the door was unlocked and they didn't try it and they were just trained on active shooter response which told them they should run in and engage the shooter as quickly as possible so he won't kill more people and they just stood there and listened to him kill more people while they were calling them on the phone and saying we're alive in here but there are people injured and dying and yet why the there were the the school board called for the, pol- the the police chief's resignation and yeah it's the school board what are they gonna do it's just aggravating but of course also yeah going against going after Daniel Defense which what the heck did Daniel Defense do and uh, the the store that sold it to him like yeah what what the heck what the heck were they gonna do especially when you think about like what losers these shooters are he probably was this meek little mousy dude who just went in and just said oh, i want to buy these rifles and this ammo is this the right ammo yes okay and probably was just like a ghost going through that shop like what what are they expecting that he's going to be like twirling his mustache snidely whiplash style telling everybody about oh will this shoot through school children so I, I have a mix, and of course, the fact that they're mixed up with every town, and we we all we all know how how much every town cares about victims of gun violence. So, yeah, this will be this will be a, a, an interesting story to watch. Hopefully, the the gun shop itself will be all and Daniel Defense will be all set to, under the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, especially since I highly doubt that Texas has a uh, one of the uh, the laws that have this like goofy thing about the false advertisement that the Parkland families use to, to, to run around uh Placa when suing Bushmaster. But either so, way, we shall see. So here's something that I want to point out because, all right, we all know that the big money, assuming they win, is going to come from Daniel Defense. But they're also suing, well, when you get right down to it, when they sue the police department, they're suing themselves. Because the police department is funded by tax dollars. And so I don't know how much they're going for um, from the police department in this $27 billion with a B lawsuit. But while I understand the desperate need to punish the guilty parties, this is absolutely the wrong way to go about it. Because by suing... The local police department, by suing the local government, they are suing themselves. And it's going to hurt a lot of people for many, many years afterwards. Uh, but hey, here's something that made me perhaps not laugh, but it made me smile in a wicked way. And uh, it just came out last week. Some of you may have heard of this by now, is that after the shooting... Uh, Local funeral homes refused to basically have anything to do with the shooter's body because, well, they claimed that they were basically filled to overflowing with uh, the bodies of the victims and and planning their funerals. And and they also felt that it would be disrespectful to them. And uh, I'm not going to say they're wrong, but 
I, I think a fair bit of that is just, oh, hell no. Screw that guy. And uh, so the, the shooter's body just sat in the county morgue for something like three weeks a month. And it, part of the problem here is that his family had trouble agreeing on what to do with him. Uh, I mean, not a terribly surprising, mind you, but I don't know. It, it warmed the subcockles of my heart that, you know, even the family went, oh, geez, yeah, we don't want him either. So, so they were fighting over this, and eventually what happened was they had to relocate him to uh, a place that was, I, I think it was like 40 miles or something away. It, it was legitimately like, you know, the next city or so over. Probably the next and, county, given how Texas is. They've got a million and one little counties in that huge state. Something like that. And uh, he was apparently, you know, cremated, I guess, without much fanfare, which is appropriate. I don't have any real point to this. It's just, okay, th there's so many awful things coming out of Uvalde that the fact that there were at least some people who said, oh, hell no, we're not going to do it. Take that jerk somewhere else. It, it made me smile just a little bit. Yeah, there's also the the political flack that can come from a funeral home handling the the you know the the services for someone as despicable as this jerk, and mm -hmm. and uh, I know I'll actually I I'll, I'll need to I'll need to look it up. I'm not going to look it up right now, but uh, I'll I'll put it in the show notes there. I know that uh, Caitlin Dowdy, who does uh, Ask a Mortician on YouTube, and it's a great channel. I really like it, um, and uh, the uh, she she talked about like there is a fun a, a funeral home director who made it to the point to take the bodies that nobody wanted to deal with just to just just to you know give them give 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 them their 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 final send off and uh, without any unnecessary fanfare without any glorification but at the same time without leaving it in the hands of other people who really don't deserve it because you think about like the morgue workers and all that stuff that have to work around that you know this body in this locker that they can't use because there's a there's human remains in it and there's there's laws you can't just chuck it in the trash and say oh, nobody wants this one uh and so <laughs> that was a surprisingly popular option among many of the comments yes. it's like they're going what texas doesn't have vultures and coyotes <laughs> <laughs> to dump him in a ditch, they'll take care of it. <laughs> they they also have they also have road runners, so yes, they have <laughs> they have lots of coyotes and probably lots of acme catalogs. <sighs> uh, yeah, but so he yeah, this this guy t t would would t would take the bodies that that no one no no one wanted to handle because they were you know too too hot to touch, if you will. And so yeah, I'll 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 I'll, I'll dig up that video. Uh, I'll dig up that video for the for the show notes for, so you guys can check check that out. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that is a, a a good story. I mean, it also adds to again we have the copycat nature to a lot of these shooters. They all like every single one of them has referenced Columbine. Every single one of them is a Columbine fan, and mm -hmm. and so seeing the complete lack of glory that goes on, especially since. You know, we'll we'll be again talking about the uh, the the heroes that have stopped these people, and I think we need to start talking about the heroes more instead of putting the the the, the killers' names up as as you know something to be at least respected, and instead do the no 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 you go you go try to shoot up a school, no one's going to respect you, but. <laughs> if someone's shooting up the school and you happen to put one in their head, we're going to give you a ticker tape parade. <laughs> so, uh, I hopefully that's that is a cultural angle that I hope will happen because there is a certain amount of glory and delusions of grandeur that these guys seem to have, and hopefully this will be one more peg taken out of that. Speaking of pegs. <laughs> Uh, this was this was just one that I actually just I just saw uh, 
I, I just saw this uh, this morning when I was uh, when I was just watching some YouTube videos. But this is a, a video from Liberty Doll. God, we love her. Uh, she is she is absolutely amazing, and she's she's recently had a baby, and she's still uh, she's still going on. And uh, if you happen to be listening to this, I love it when you pause as your baby's just babbling and ruining the shot entirely. Like as as a dad, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm totally there. Um, but uh, but yeah, she's talking about essentially the ATF has been raiding people who have bought solvent traps, and. I think she's a little bit more generous than I am about these solvent traps because like, I mean, it was, it's even more on the nose when you see the ads for inline fuel filters uh, where it's one of those like, okay, that is clearly a suppressor with baffle stacks. What makes you think that any of that would filter fuel? And these are, very much that is the I totally get the solvent traps and there I mean there's some people that make some legit solvent traps like I think I remember seeing one a while back I don't know what happened to it uh, where it was it was an adapter that you could put on the end of your uh, of your muzzle and attach like a a one or two liter soda bottle to it and so essentially the idea is you just be pushing your push your patches and spray your solvent through the gun. And just push your patches through and they would just fall into the soda bottle. And when you were done cleaning all your guns, you just can throw the soda bottle in the trash and just save you on cleanup and 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 mess on the floor. I mean, like, one of the reasons why I never finished off my basement was because, yeah, I want the bare concrete floor because I can drip whatever crap I want on it and it's not going to hurt the floor. Um, but a lot of these are straight up suppressors that just need a little bit of assembly and Several of the people she mentions here actually had done the, you know, submitted the ATF form for and, and paid the tax to convert these into legal suppressors, which you absolutely can do. Um, uh, but the, the, the key fact that I got in here is that I've seen this and actually I've got a, a post on my blog. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll put that in the show notes as well, where I stumbled. I think it was on Facebook stumbled across a Facebook ad for a still and the website was straight up giving recipes for, for whiskey in that. And for those that don't know when prohibition happened, all, you know, creating your own alcohol became illegal. And then like all things, when they take, they take your rights away. And then when they give them back, they give you back most of them. And one of the things that they didn't give back was the right to distill your own spirits. So I can make beer, but I cannot throw that in a still and make it into whiskey. Uh, you can buy and own a still. You can make perfume. You can make extracts. You can do all sorts of distillation processes from it. So long uh, you can make alcohol. You could, you can make your own fuel or cleaning solvent or, uh, or, or, or camp fuel or whatever you want for it. But the moment that alcohol touches your lips and you drink it, you are now committing tax evasion from the ATF and, and, you know, your dogs are going to get shot. And mm -hmm. I saw this place and they're straight up advertising it as a whiskey still. And furthermore, the, the ad set, you know, said, we will not ship to PO boxes. This must be shipped to your physical address. And it was one of those like, okay, this really smells funny. This smells like a honey pot. And the same thing goes with all the, the solvent traps and the inline fuel filters you see on Amazon and Facebook and wish.com and all that. It's one of those like, yeah, there's no way that these people are, are, are going out. Well, in this case, all these people bought these on Gunbroker. Was it Gunbroker? I think it was Gunbroker. Yes. Yeah. And it, it was, and it was from a specific individual, someone by the name of Rifle Remedy 2000. That's now, we're not saying that Rifle Remedy 2000 is an ATF honeypot, but we aren't not saying it either. But either way, um, RR2K is definitely on the ATF's radar. And so don't buy from him because then you'll get a visit and i i hated watching that video because this video uh, i i believe was from someone who actually had a permit um but the atf decided that 
he didn't have enough of them. You know, he, he had bought several of them. Okay, tell you what. Here's what I'm unclear on. Liberty Doll said that one of the people visited by the ATF was someone who had bought several of these solvent traps and who had a tax stamp, but the ATF decided, well, you're obviously making multiples and you've only got one tax stamp and that's bad. I don't remember if that's the same person who was in the video or not. That was. It was? Great. Regardless, this is a really great video that's also horrible. It's great the way this person responded and it's horrible for the way the ATF did it. Um, we, we've seen some of the videos. I mean, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago where the ATF showed up at some guy's door and they wanted to make sure that he had bought the guns and it wasn't a straw purchase. And they were just acting weird. And so so now they're coming up and, and they're demanding things. And what this guy does is basically it's like, hey, you have a warrant? Nope. Then go away. And they try to go to him, and they they almost put words in his mouth. And you know, for for one thing, he says, "Well, you're ATF. You said we're idiots. No, I said you're ATF. I, that could have been a legitimate mishearing, but l just listen to the whole thing. And they are not only fishing, but they are threatening him. Okay, so you know how in TV shows." When the police have arrested someone and they're trying to get the perp to talk and the perp says, I want a lawyer. And the police then say, well, sure, we can get you a lawyer. But if we do that, we can't help you right now. You know, talk to us and we can help you. And don't ever do that. <laughs> In fact, um, weird help me here to remember to link to a video it's like 10 years old by this point and it's basically don't talk to the police oh yeah no i, I, yeah, I know I, I know the exact video it, it's it's in the show notes <laughs> yeah and when you ask for a lawyer that ought to be i mean according to the law that is a magical protection that descends and they can't do anything without your lawyer present so the police whose job is really not to determine right from wrong that's for the courts their job is to investigate and arrest for prosecution they will do anything they can to get a confession out of you and so when they say hey don't get your lawyer work with us they are fishing for ways to incriminate you and that's exactly what these guys were doing and it was well sure i mean we can come back with a warrant but, you know, then if we do, then, you know, we're going to catch you in felonies and, you know, you're going to be uh, arrested and you know, you're you on our radar now. And, and they are just straight up threatening the, this guy. And this guy, to his credit, one, he remains calm. Two, he takes the piss out of him. And he, I don't remember the actual quote, but he basically calls them a joke and and says, well, he accuses them of shooting dogs. Mm -hmm. Uh, which which is true, actually. But he, he doesn't quite go to the extent of you puppy killers, but it's implied. And I love the way he handles it. I hate the way the ATF did it. And unfortunately, I, I, I feel like this is only getting worse because yeah, I realize this sounds kind of paranoid, but I mean, Biden has made it very plain how he feels about guns and... I, I've commented before just how out of control the ATF is and out of control in that they seem to be operating without legislative oversight because, again, Chevron deference. But I, I, I really feel like well, we saw it with Trump. Trump says, hey, ATF, I don't want bump stocks. And they say, sure, bump stocks are illegal now. And so Biden is basically saying, hey, I want to do a crackdown. And the ATF will go, sure, we'll do a crackdown. And so they're investigating multiple gun purchases. They're trying to confiscate their rare breed triggers. They're trying to confiscate solvent traps now. Past a certain point, this is going to become unconscionable. And I, I don't want us to get to that point because the point right after that is the shooting. And... I am too old and too fat to live through a civil war. I mean, that's true. 
And uh, one last note. To... Thank you for agreeing. I'm old and fat. Weird. I love you too. Well, you no, I'm I'm old and fat also, <laughs> and I'm not going to live through a civil war either. I was just <laughs> that was that was a rejoinder of sigh. <laughs> Uh, for I remember showing when that video first came up of the never talk to the police and, and it's a lecture series with a lawyer talking first and then a police officer coming in and talking after him and neither one of them know what the other person's going to going to say and so the lawyer starts talking essentially saying the police aren't your friends and he they're there to, to, to conduct an investigation and everyone's a suspect if you call the police to come help you they will come and help you, but they'll also look at you like maybe you are trying to cover something up or trying to pull a fast one. They're always going to be looking for suspects. And I remember being absolutely floored by it. And I tried to show it to my wife and, at the, and she just looked at it. And she's like, this is 90 minutes long. I ain't got time for this. So the, the too long didn't uh, di- didn't read angle is that the lawyer essentially points out the fact that the police is not your friend. They're there to identify suspects and to make a case. And and if they're there, you are potentially a suspect and they're going to look at you like you are a potential suspect. And then the police officer comes up and goes, yeah, pretty much what he said. <laughs> That just not like, only am I not going to disagree with anything he said, I'm going to agree with most of it. And then I'm going to add to it. It became like the greatest improv, ske- improv sketch of all times. Uh, yeah, but that'll be in the show notes. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Aaron. Mm-hmm. And let's see. Oh, all right. Now we're now now we're getting into the uh, into the good into the good news here. Uh, this is this is this is a good one. I mean, it's one of those I. I absolutely love uh, that that this is happening. Uh, Texas has officially ruled that uh, you can't uh, you can't ban eighteen to twenty year olds from carrying handguns because they are adults and therefore they have a full complement of rights, including the right to keep and bear arms. Love it. Yeah, I I I love it too. And there's there are certain people that are. You know, especially with the the recent shootings where they have all been very, very young men uh, doing, you know, doing the shootings. Uh, And, you know, that's just I think that's just a trend point, because let's be honest, the age gap is very, very wide. And so it's it's not one age group that's that's are doing these mass shootings. So the idea that young men are somehow worse than older people is i i think bs uh but also hey if you don't want young men carrying guns then you should make them not men anymore and say say whatever number you want shouldn't be able to own a gun until 26 cool you aren't an adult until you're 26 that also means you can't vote that also means you can't uh, you you can't sign contracts. That also that that also means that you uh, that that you can't you you can't enter into you know dangerous life choices. You can't buy cigarettes. You can't buy alcohol. You can't, can't join the military. Oh, that's the big one. That's the big one that mm-hmm. they don't want. They, yep. They, they 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 need these eighteen to twenty year olds to die for this country, and uh, so. Yeah, that's the and and they wanted to vote because, of course, also, you know, in Massachusetts, we literally I think we literally had like one referendum where there was a question to or no, they were trying to put the two referendums on the same time. I think neither one of them made it onto the ballot, but one was to lower the voting age in Massachusetts to 16 and the other one was to ban all possession of firearms uh, from people under the age of 21. Yeah, that was li- that literally happened in Massachusetts. Mhm. And no, you, you you can't have it both ways. And, I mean, honestly speaking, I think the whole, you know, cigarette and alcohol. Though I think has cigarettes switched to 21 now? I don't know. I've never I, it, smoked. I th- I believe it is in Massachusetts now, but I can't remember if they 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 they, they switched that federally. Uh but there I I believe there was rules that said that you now can't buy cigarettes until you're 21, just like alcohol, which, you know, makes <laughs> absolutely zero sense when, uh, you know, in light of the I'm not going to take any sides on this, but in light of the the college uh, uh, debt forgiveness issue, many of these people who are, are having this 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 debt canceled, uh, they were 
17, 18 years old and signing up for hundreds of thousands of dollars in, you know, for college degrees that may or may not have returned at all on that investment. Mm -hmm. And we're going to say that's okay, but, but we, but you can't buy a cigarette. You can't have a cigarette. Mm -hmm. Well, I've gone on record many times as saying that I hate double standards, and this is one of them. Mm -hmm. we, we've got this sort of split regarding adulthood. And, it, okay, when you turn 18, you're a legal adult, and you're mostly an adult, but there are some things that you're still not an adult for. And then you have to get to 21 to get almost all of them, and then I think 25 for a few more. And... At this point, I don't really care. Uh, you know, of course, the older I get, the more I think adulthood should be delayed. But some of that is just, well, I remember I was an idiot at that age. And also, honestly, I'm still kind of an idiot today. Um, but, but in general, it's just let's pick an age. And that's the age for legal adulthood. And when you're a legal adult, you can do all the things. You can smoke and drink and vote and, you know, enter into contracts and do all these things because otherwise it's hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with you completely. Is, age is one of those things of, yes, I have met people in their 60s who are so immature that they really you know <laughs> they can't they can't be they can't be trusted trust tr trusted trusted without supervision and at the same time i have met people who are 14 15 16 who are much more well put together than the vast majority of adults that are in their you know in, in their 20s and so it, there's really no way to 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 have a admission test to adulthood though that might be an interesting idea you could test out of out of childhood um but uh well i mean to a certain extent we do have that it is possible to become an emancipated minor that's true that is absolutely true and so yeah actually that would so there we go that would be a very very cool setup is that make all the rules major and minor and and so yeah if you're an adult you get all the things. If you're a minor, you don't set the age at like 27, you know, at that point in time, look, you're either there or you're not. And let's be honest, the people that never, never grew up, they're not that much of a problem. Uh, but so set it at age 27 and then have just a system for emancipating yourself of whenever the heck you feel fit there. We've changed the world, Aaron, <laughs> but <laughs> barring all of that, if you are 18, you are an adult in this, in this, in this country. That is the, the true legal. I mean, it's, it's, you are an adult at 18. And Aaron, you, you know, you mentioned that, yeah, up until 21, you, you can't buy a lot of things and that is law. And then I believe all the stuff that's, you know, 21 to like 25, 26, whatever the number is, a lot of the stuff is like you can't rent a rental car without a co signer, uh, when you're in your 20s. Uh, and, but I, I believe that is not a law. I believe that is entirely like policy done by underwriters and actuary tables where it's no, 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 a 22 year old man is going to wrap this car around a telephone pole or leave it with the keys in the ignition and someone's going to steal it. So just, it's not, it's not worth your time and effort. They don't have, they don't have enough money to be a, be a major issue anyway. So just only, only rent, only rent to, 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 to older people. Uh, I don't, I don't think there's any specific laws that say you can't do some, do any particular thing after the age of 21. But either way, the, the right to keep and bear arms is, is age of majority. And to say that you can't, we don't have any right to cigarettes. We don't have any right to alcohol. Uh, we don't have any right to rental cars. So. Those are just fine, but we do have the right to keep and bear arms. And so I applaud this Texas law, especially since Texas is constitutional carry. So not only do you, you know, can you get a permit at, at age 18 now in Texas, you also don't need a permit. You can just carry your gun. And if that sounds scary to you, I would highly recommend you crack open some statistics and show me statistically why that's scary. Because believe me, if, 
if if it was as scary as as you may think it is, every anti gun group on earth would be talking about the horrible bloodshed that comes from constitutional carry and letting people who aren't trained or aren't this or aren't that carry guns. Co- continuing with Texas, let's Aaron. I know I know you've been having ha- having a rough couple of weeks, but come on. This is going to warm the cockles of your heart. Beto O'Rourke is now pro-gun again. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. He's losing. Um, when, I mean, he was like a, was he a s- state representative? I'm trying to remember the last time he actually won a race. And I don't think it was anything particular. And I, you know what? Beto's not even worth me Googling it to, to, to find out when the last time he has won a race. But as a general rule, ever since then, he has lost and lost horribly. Um, I, I did lose that horribly to, uh, to Ted Cruz, but he's still not Senator, Senator Beto O'Rourke. Uh, but yes, Beto has a, uh, has put out a ad actually on his, uh, on his YouTube channel. I have, I have a link to, to the actual video. Um, uh, from his YouTube channel. And if you actually look at the videos on his YouTube channel, he's got a whole bunch of people and these are just single people. And for all I know, they could be lying. Uh, who's like, one of them's like a Trump voter for, for Beto. Another is a Republican for Beto. And one of them is a gun owner for Beto. And it is literally a woman with a baby on her hip who says she's a gun owner. And she comes from a conservative town in Texas and she originally believed all the hype that said Beto was coming for for their guns. Why would they? She, why would you believe that hype? Because he said so. On hell mo- yeah, we're coming for your AR-15. Hell yeah, we're coming for your AK-47. Yep. And even in this race, even in this race, we reported it. Even in this race, he said he was going to ban assault weapons, and he was going to confiscate them. <laughs> but now he's. But now he's not going. It's still the same race. It's still the same candidate. But now she's saying, oh, no, he said he's not going to take our guns. And I believe him. Oh, this is the, the he also said he's going to call you in the morning. And and he's, he's never he's never been with anybody like you, baby. I mean, this is just predatory at this point. Oh, but you know what? As as, as <laughs> if you're stupid enough to believe it, you know what? Good for you. Go, go, go and vote for Beto because, yeah, no, he's totally not going to take your guns. I mean, he's probably not going to because it, as Texas governor, like even the Democrats in, 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 in the Texas House and Senate are going to be like, no, we are not going to let you do that. We like our phony baloney jobs. Harum, 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 harum. If you want to be a one-term governor, that's fine. <laughs> Plus, again, we will have all these campaign ads. Again, it's like all. I wonder. Actually, I forgot to look at his uh, at his YouTube channel. I wonder if you scroll back far enough on 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 his uh, uh, on on his YouTube on, on his YouTube channel to uh, uh, if you'll get the uh, if you'll start getting to the to to the to, to the like literally you've got the ad where the person is saying that oh I'm people are saying that Beto's going to uh, <clears throat> Beto's going to ban uh, is going to ban guns oh, I'm not going to believe it to literally videos of Beto saying yeah I'm going to ban all the guns <laughs> I'm just going to scroll down real quick and let's see for people who didn't understand the reference Harumph was from Mel Brooks classic Blazing Saddles. As was, we've got to protect our phony baloney jobs. Eh, he's got like, he just like puts out like a, a, a one minute video every six seconds. So, uh, some, any, anybody who's interested in doing a little doom scrolling, scroll on, scroll, scroll on down and see if you could find like literally on the exact same YouTube page, a video of Pato saying that he's not going to ban guns and a video of him saying he's going to ban guns. It's very similar to. I'm trying to remember what the issue was, but um, I know I, I know it got published on a website. I think it was about the the uh, uh, of invading Iraq. Uh, somebody sent John Kerry a uh, when he was the senator of Massachusetts sent him a letter, and he got a response back. And then a couple of days later, another letter arrived in the mail, and it was the exact opposite response. 
It's like somebody screwed up in the mailroom and forgot to forgot that they that they had already sent a response. Had sent him the, happened to had happened to sent him the, the other letter. Oh, good times! And I I believe Beto is currently a dub, double digit uh, point deficit. So uh, yeah, ten points t- ten points between him and Abbott in the current polling. So uh, like I said, he's losing. He's losing <laughs> hard though. Good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good. He deserves it. I mean, he needs to lose so hard that he is shamed by this and never runs for office again. Uh, that would imply that he has the ability to feel shame. And <laughs> <laughs> True. I know. <laughs> if, if you want to take a bet on that, I'll take your money. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just wish, wistfully hoping. <sighs> But uh, as as St. Jane the well arm says, crap in one hand and wish in the other. See which one fills up first. I've got that on the motivational cube on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife designed it for me. The, the eye roll she gave me when I was telling her, I've got a, I've got a, uh, a, a six side. It's a photo cube. And my wife has one that's covered with inspirational sayings on each side and uh and it's just sitting on her desk in her office and of course i don't take anything seriously i'm like i want one too and uh yes i i made one so the first one i chose was i heart to fart uh that's that that's a good one uh a couple i can't read but yes i've got the wish into <laughs> one hand and bleep into the other uh let's see i can't sing that one can't say that one <laughs> Uh, oh, I've also got your call is important to us. Your question will be answered in the order of which it was received. <laughs> I happen to. How say, is that funny? I I say I say that a lot around our houses. Someone, someone asks me a question, I'll say your call is important to us, and it'll be answered in the order of which it received. <laughs> when meanwhile, the person that you're calling for the tech support line's probably outside having a cigarette. Well, Aaron, we've been talking about firearms news for about long enough, but. You know what? Xander is going to bring us his independent thoughts on how the news actually handles firearms. Welcome to Independent Thoughts with yours truly, Xander Opal. Since I've been working outdoors quite a bit, I've been keeping an eye on the weather. The site I tend to use has links to articles next to the forecasts. Things like flooding risk, drought relief, Andrew, worst hurricane in Florida history, Florida mother becomes 14th U.S. Lightning fatality this year. There's just no completely good stories listed. Everything is disasters and bad news to get people to click. The National Weather Service had to get places like the Weather Channel to stop naming winter storms, which were just simply winter weather. All of this is to get people to put eyes on ads, whether TV or in sidebars, or embedded in articles, or pop-ups, or, well, I should stop and let my blood pressure go back down. The news treats firearms the way weather reporting treats weather events. Everything is ramped up to get eyes on ads. People, sadly, are attracted to bad news. The headlines scream about deaths, not lives saved. Photos are the most impactful, to get the most visceral reaction of horror and fear. This isn't to make guns look bad in and of itself, This is a desire to get revenue. Fear is pretty profitable, it turns out. Scammers use it. Advertisers use it. News uses it. Politicians use it. It doesn't take a grand conspiracy, Bloomberg's manipulations aside. It just takes the right incentives in the pocketbook. It's the same reason gas stations and grocery stores put screens up where people wait to play ads. It takes a lot to undo the damage perverse incentives do. It is extremely hard to recognize there is a problem in the first place. Then you have to figure out how to fix it without wrecking other things. Some of it is to help people think about what they see better, so folks can turn away from more things. It looks a bit odd, for example, to wear earplugs while putting gas in my car, and looking unusual is a huge cost in any society. I pay a price in other ways as well. By not watching or reading news, I don't get legitimate information such as that regarding politicians and political candidates. I miss out on local events. It's a price I'm willing to pay, though, as I feel I gain more than I lose. Sadly, I don't have a neat and tidy solution for this one. Have fun, be safe, and I hope I gave you something to think about. So, 
Perverse incentives. This is something that's an interest of mine. And there are a whole bunch of uh, examples of this. But there, there are two that I want to talk about. One is classic and one is very, very recent. And so the classic example, uh, th there's another one, but it's anecdotal involving the British in India. But the one that we do know uh, happened in Hanoi, Vietnam in 1902. Uh, and under French colonial rule, the government created a bounty program that paid a reward for each rat killed. And in order to claim the bounty, people would need to provide the severed tail of a rat. Well, people being people, they decided this is a great way to make money. Colonial officials began noticing rats in Hanoi with no tails. Because, yeah, you can cut the tail off a rat without killing it. So the rat catchers would capture the rats, sever their tails get the bounty, and then release the tailless rats back into the sewers so that they could produce more rats, so that the rat catchers could catch more, so that they could be paid more, and so on and so forth. And just like with the, the cobra effect in India that's anecdotal, when the government program stops, things are now worse because you have a lot more rats. That's that's the classic example. The other one is super, super recent. And that's the gentleman who 3D printed about 60 some odd guns and tried to uh, turn them in at, at Houston, Texas. Succeeded in turning them in. Well, yes, he succeeded so much that, uh, well, he, he pointed out the, the perverse incentive and the government decided, well... The intelligent thing would have been to stop doing buybacks, but they just decided, no, we're not going to allow ghost guns um, to be turned in. But again, that was the entire point of a lot of gun control. It's like, no, oh, these ghost guns are scary, but you can't turn them in. Mm -hmm. So so those are examples of perverse incentives. Uh, and I just wanted to point out, because I don't think Xander touched on this, is you know, in addition to the inherent problem that they face, it's that when they stop, they've actually made things worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that is true. And and I, what came to my mind was right when I first started getting into Second Amendment activism, I still had the glimmer in my head that I might someday become a fiction writer. And, uh, and I hadn't quite realized that, oh, you need talent to do that, sweetie. Uh, but uh, I, I was thinking up a storyline. I was thinking about like, oh, there's all these, you know, these people that, you know, carry guns every day and they're just regular people and they're being vilified the news and all that. I should write a story where it's just a bunch of people who 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 have their concealed carry permits and are going about their day to day life and end up fighting crime in a crime filled city. But I don't want to make this like one of those vigilante things. I don't want it to be like, you know, death wish or any of those, you know, movies that are much more sensational. And I didn't want to make them, you know, Oh, they're all like ex special forces and Marine Corps snipers and, you know, whatever, you know, you know, totems that you want to put onto a person that would somehow make them a better killer. Uh, and just as I'm adding these rules to keep my story grounded and down to earth, I am getting rid of all potential for an interesting story. You know, it's the, the vast majority. I mean, I've, I've been carrying a gun for what, 15 years now. And uh, yeah, I've never shot anybody. I've never, never really had, 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 you know, felt like it was getting close. I mean, a couple of times I was glad I had a gun on me, but that was as far as it went. Aaron, I don't think you've shot anybody. <laughs> no, no, I haven't. I, I, you, I, you would know by now if I had. I, I think as long as we've been hanging out, I've got to, I've got to imagine we've been close friends for long enough. I think it would have come up that, oh yeah, no, I've got, I've got some kills under my belt. Uh, so yeah, I. I I would be freaking out on social media and and it would probably be an oh god oh god oh god this happened mm -hmm. uh and and you know and then if there's a court case it, yeah the media would be all over it once they found out 
you know, who are represented. So, yeah, fortunately, and uh, hopefully it'll never happen. Yeah. So it's, you know, same here. Yeah. No, the closest I've got is I have a, uh, had a, had, had, had a friend I met through the blogging who had, uh, who had somebody breaking into their house and he fired a shot at them. It hit the wall. It like hit like the window sill or the frame of the window. And they saw, they realized, oh, I'm taking fire. And they took off. And that was, that was as close to anybody in my immediate circle that was uh that was going to take take a life not in war uh and so yeah the it's one of those like yeah the 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 real life news is super duper boring so the stories that you end up reading about are are the outliers and therefore the the most unrealistic i have no idea how to introduce david's segment it's it's about church security Hi, and welcome to Gun Lovers and Other Strangers. In this segment, I'd like to talk about site security, specifically regarding places of worship. Over the past several years, there have been mass murder events perpetrated or attempted at places of worship throughout the country. These included Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina, nine killed, one injured, First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas, 26 killed, 22 injured, Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 11 killed, six injured, and West Freeway Church in White Settlement, Texas, two killed, none injured. The differences in outcomes from these events are quite stark. In all but the last, the killer had a free fire zone full of unarmed victims. The exception was due to the actions of Jack Wilson and other armed members of the congregation. Thankfully, they were there and quickly put an end to the attack. Once again, proving the adage that we are our own first responders. Recently, I was contacted by my local synagogue about security during services. This was not due to any specific threats they'd received, but more as a proactive measure. This is a small congregation, mostly made up of older members, and they have limited funds to allocate towards a security team. One of my fellow trainers consults on security for places of worship, and I've talked to him about this topic a few times. Among the points he stressed are setting up of security cameras both inside and outside having an armed response team on site, and most important of all, interaction and drills with the members of the congregation. If things go sideways, the last thing a security team member needs is people jumping up into their arc of fire from panic. Like with fire drills, or back in the day fallout drills, the time to practice and prepare for a serious event is before it happens. This can be everything from talking and walking parishioners through the plan to full-scale force-on-force drills with members present for the action. Finally, these plans and drills need to be practiced, reviewed, and updated regularly. Regardless of what form it takes, if a security team is in place, they need to know what they're doing, and the congregants need to know what they should, or in many cases should not be doing, in case of an actual emergency. This security team should also not be a one-trick pony. After all, a medical emergency is much more likely than an active shooter. Having at least one member of the team trained and equipped to respond to an injury or a heart attack is extremely important. They can also assist with evacuation in case of a fire or other natural disaster. Whatever form it takes, this kind of planning is not something that should be done casually or haphazardly. Right before I recorded this segment, I heard from the synagogue that they've decided to go with a licensed and bonded security firm. I'm glad they decided to take this route. My sincerest hope is this team will never be needed. Since you mean to hang me, I'd like to atone to my maker. You got one minute. Speak your piece. Where to begin? I regret having trifled with married women. I'm entirely ashamed of having cheated at cards. I deplore my occasional departures from the truth. Forgive me for taking your name in vain. My Saturday drunkenness, my Sunday sloth. Above all, forgive me for the men I have killed in anger. And for those I am about to. That about wraps up this segment. If you have any questions for me or suggestions for future segments or a comment on a past segment, please post them on the Assorted Calibers podcast Facebook or MeWe pages, and Aaron or Weird will make sure I see them. I'm also a contributor on the Blue Collar Prepping blog, which can be found at bluecollarprepping.blogspot.com. We're always looking for people interested in submitting posts to the blog, so please check out the site. Finally, I'm also a published author, and books with my stories can be found on Amazon under the name Brenna Bach. 
That's B-R-E-N-A-B-O-C-K. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. I'm David, and this is Gun Lovers and Other Strangers. I mentioned this earlier, uh, and so now now is the time to say it. I We've got to repeat the names of heroes like Jack Wilson, Stephen Williford, and Eli Dicken. And I wish I knew more, because there are lots and lots of more people that have stopped mass shootings and have and have ended uh, ended these horrific type events and just the news was just not reporting them the, the way the way they are now and i think one of the ways that we can get out from under this is to pay more attention to the heroes and less uh, attention to the villains okay i don't know if this is relevant or not but i want to say something and it's a slightly amusing story and it's it's an Aaron story, not a weird story. So it'll be over soon. So uh, when I go to church, I carry a gun because, you know, people get shot, as has just been pointed out. I mean, I started carrying it well before people started shooting at uh, places of worship. But, you know, I obviously I stand by my decision. But um, in in the churches I go to, Almost always there is something that's called passing the peace, and it's more of a Protestant thing than a Catholic thing, really. But it, it's generally, you know, hey, you go up to the person you're standing next to, your friends, whatever, and, you know, you, you wish the peace of the Lord upon them. And some, sometimes you shake hands, especially if you don't know them, but if they're friends, whatever, you, know, you give them a hug. And it's – I. <laughs> I'm not going to justify it. It's really just a, you know, touchy-feely part of – the um the service and there's nothing inherently wrong with that because you know part of the reason you go to church is to you know forge bonds between other congregants you know you want to be close to them so anyway our choir director is ukrainian by which i mean he was born in ukraine when it was a soviet republic and i go up to to give him a hug and i don't quite remember how it happened but his arm bumped my gun <laughs> and I, I i didn't say anything about it i was expecting him to react but but honestly my entire reaction was that one particular uh you know jeff goldblum picture where he's like doing the shush and making the winky mm -hmm. uh thing and it's like Shh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was me and it's just like oh crap what's going to happen cuz i don't know his stance on guns what i'm doing is perfectly legal but you know what's going to happen you know especially because he grew up in you know russian controlled ukraine and he didn't say anything. He he might not have even noticed that he bumped my gun. I, I, I think it was just a case of we both decided to pretend it didn't happen. That's it. That's the story. It it amused me. <laughs> that that actually happened to, to me once when I was at one of the offices I worked at that that had no weapons policy and ta da I got my carry permit and suddenly I am carrying at work. And uh yeah, somebody, uh, uh, so, some somebody went and was like, I think I'd said something that was work appropriate, but I was towing the line because I'm weird, period. <laughs> and, and that's just how it goes. And I think she went to go punch me in the shoulder and missed the shoulder, and it and it, it the hit would have landed on my ribs, but it hit my mag carrier <laughs> of my shoulder holster. <laughs> And she looked very, very shocked at the fact that she, had, she had that that she had missed my shoulder, hit me in the ribs. Was was probably going to feel upset that she had punched me in the ribs instead of the shoulder, and but then realized that she had punched something hard and not my ribs, and then decided that, you know what. She was doing something even more inappropriate at work at laying hands on me, and that was the end of it. But if I had to bet, bet I guarantee this person was rabidly anti-gun. Like this was this was not somebody that was that that I would ever pick as someone who who would be in favor of the right to keep and bear arms. But she just said, "You know what? We're just not going to speak of this." 
Uh, and and I may want. I add that that audio clip at the end of uh, of of David's was uh, from uh, the John Wayne classic, The Cowboys, which is an absolutely amazing Western. I really, really like it. It's one of those. It's it's a star studded cast. And it it's from that golden age of Westerns where there was more there's there's there was more than just westerns there's lots of subgenres of westerns and this one specifically was kind of a family friendly warm the cockles of the heart sort of western and i i i i will be remiss uh without pointing out the scene where essentially the point is that a whole bunch of the the of uh, john wayne's characters he's a he's a cattle rancher and he's going to drive the cattle up to market and uh, but all of his cowboys leave uh, for the gold rush. And so suddenly he's got absolutely no staff and he has cattle that need to be moved. Uh, something that's probably a, a plight very similar to what's going on right now. And uh, and so he decides that he is going to hire all the boys from the one room schoolhouse. So cowboys and <laughs> one of the boys shows up and he's young. He's like maybe six or seven and it's probably the actor is probably six or seven and he's got a walker colt on him and the thing is bigger than he is and uh <laughs> it's just it's it, it is it is a good movie it is a very very good movie and i it, i highly recommend it to everyone and now it's time for me to thank everyone so thanks to each and every one of our listeners and a very special thanks to all our supporters on Patreon. To be a Patreon patron, go to patreon.com slash Assorted Calibers podcast to sign up. There you can get an early release of the podcast. Plus also you can get bonus content like the hilarious ACP blooper reels and the ACP film tracks. And uh, for our ultimate subscribers, we have the ACP Mag Dump, which is our bonus show every month. Also, please remember to rate us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe to us on the platform of your choice, and share the show with your friends both online and off. I get a blog. It's called weirdworld.com. I'm on Handgun Radio. It's all right. <laughs> uh, you can find me at uh, linkter.e slash Aaron Paulette, one word. And, uh, and I've never been invited to Handgun Radio. Well, you we- we, we, we will we will see what we can do because you should be on I mean I have no idea what I'll talk about well but... that's that, that, that that's the big question. but I mean you know David and oddball have been invited I'm feeling kind of left out well let's let, let's let's come up with an idea and Aaron Paulette can be on because come on man Ryan Machad loves you just as much as I do <sighs> Well, I don't know. Ryan Machad has never offered to lick my butt. He's, he's a filthy human being. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you know, and, and, until he tells me my farts smell like warm apple pie, there's just no comparison. Challenge! <laughs> and speaking of farts smell like warm apple pie, I used to live with Nate Spencer, who does our music, and uh, they don't. <laughs> Weird beards, tacos or burritos? Pick one. Oh, don't lay that evil on me, Aaron Paulette. <laughs> <laughs> don't give me that Sophie's Choice bullshit. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> oh. You know what? I'm gonna say I, I, I'm gonna say burritos just because that will keep me away from the fact that I am a soft taco, not a hard taco person. <laughs> <laughs> Title of your sex tape. <laughs> I mean, you are you are far from wrong. <laughs> so he likes burritos and I prefer tacos. Our uh, Mexican preference is assorted and so is our podcast. It's weak, I know, but I gave you something, dang it. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good <laughs> night.